and I'm going to start the webinar. Good morning and welcome. Um, this, if you are here for the international student um, webinar, you are in the right place. We're just gonna give everyone a couple of minutes um, to log on and then we'll get started. All right, good morning. Well, it's good morning here in Nashville, depending on where you are around the world, it may be a very different time for you, but um, welcome to the International Student Webinar. My name is Melissa Grisolfi. I'm the Dean of Residential Colleges and the Dean of the Ingram Commons, which is where all first year students live. Um, I'm also a professor in the Department of Teaching and Learning. And today I'm really pleased to be joined by a host of panelists who are gonna talk through some of the experiences that incoming international students have or can anticipate having here at Vanderbilt. Um, so I'll start by introducing the panelists. Um, so we have um, joining us today, Radhika Reddy, who um, is the manager and, of inter and an international student and scholar advisor in the office of ISSS. Stephanie Golovin, who's the Senior Language Teaching Specialist, Shaleen Helmuth, who's the Director for the Center of Languages, Michael Wallace, who's the Assistant Director of the First Year Experience, and Suha Nader, who's the uh, Vice President's, President of ILEAD, which is one of our student orgs that she'll tell you about. Um, so to begin, I'm going to turn this over to our very first panelist, who's Radhika Reddy. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the session. Um, today we are going to, uh, I'm I'm a service manager at International Student Scholar Services, and I'll be talking about um, how to get an at 20 if you have any questions, how to contact our office. If you have any questions in between, we'll be happy to help you. Um, so I work as a service manager. Our main uh, goal at ISS is issuing I-20s for all the international students. So as soon as you're admitted, we will send you an email with instructions how to request an I-20. Once you receive an I-20, we issue an I-20, you'll be receiving a, all the pre-arrival information as well. Um, Wallace, can you go to the next session? Yes. And after you receive I-20 or DS 2019 from our office, we'll send you an email with instructions, allows you to view comprehensive pre-arrival information to help you to prepare to arrive at um, to Vanderbilt University. Once you do that, you will be paying CVS fee, which is I-901 CVS fee. You will receive the link for that one as well through our email instructions. Once you pay the CVS fee, you will be uh, scheduling an appointment with the, for the visa appointment. Once you obtain the visa, then you will be arriving to US. We, we highly recommend do not schedule the flight ticket until you obtain your visa, because that's what the biggest um, issue we are seeing with the students. You are uh, scheduling an appointment, then if you don't have the visa, then it'll be you, probably, really difficult for you to reschedule your visa, um, visa appointment as well as your flight. And also we are doing uh, information sending health insurance and wellness support for all international students. And also make sure COVID consideration for initial students and exchange students. And once you arrive at uh, Vanderbilt, make sure that you complete the CVS check-in process. This is very important for us because we have to register your CVS record for the immigration purposes so that your CVS record will become active and you can maintain your reference status throughout the, um, your program at Vanderbilt University. And also housing information. We'll be uh, doing that housing information session as well with the panelists. And next session, Mas. Uh, throughout the summer, ISS will be hosting different series of pre-arrival sessions on Zoom as a part of our orientation. 
And these sessions will be help you to transition to Vanderbilt as well as in Nashville, uh, connect to the community as well. Please make sure to check your email and also website for more details, but we are, you can always email your primary advisor. If you have any more questions about your I-20 or visa information, we'll be happy to help you and assist you to make your transition more easy to Vanderbilt University. Uh, next session. Thank you so much, and we'll look forward to meeting you soon. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Stephanie. I work with the English Language Center, um, and I'd like to just explain to you what we do. Um, next slide, please. So uh, what we do is we work with students, faculty, staff, postdocs, basically anyone on campus in the Vanderbilt community who speaks English and uses English as an additional language. Uh, next slide, please. And we like to support you all in a number of ways. We offer um, courses that you can sign up for. That is, for example, writing course for undergraduates, specifically looking at the kinds of writing you're expected to do on campus. Um, we offer support for academic speaking, so not just participating in class and class discussions, but also presenting, doing panel presentations like we're doing here today, um, the types of skills for public speaking and uh, speaking on in campus events. We also offer support for pronunciation. And besides course support for these areas, we also offer consultations. So basically a one-on-one -on -one session that's 50 minutes long. And you can also get support in writing, speaking, and pronunciation in that format as well that fits with your schedule. Um, besides that, we also offer workshops throughout the year and we offer on-demand resources on our website that you can access even now over the summer. Um, all of these resources and uh, examples of support are there to help you make the most out of your time here at Vanderbilt and fully participate in all of the events and courses and experiences on campus. Uh, next slide. So some of the examples of the on-demand resources on our website um, are listed here, and I just want to point out, for example, if you want to think about what are some of the ways I could expand my academic vocabulary or think about the conventions for writing academic emails in a U.S. academic environment, these are some of the resources you can access here. I do want to highlight one of our newest resources is the Glossary of Wellbeing Terms, and we created this in coordination with the University Counseling Center. So when you hear folks talking on campus about things like well-being and mental health and, uh, and wellness, um, these are some of the terms that you would hear them talking about. And so you can uh, take a look at some of those terms right on our website today. Um, the last one I want to uh, point out is that our newest, newest resource is a supplement to support your work reading the campus reading this summer. In a few weeks, you'll be receiving an email that shows you what the campus reading is and uh, talks about what that book will uh, and, and the activities around that book will be. In that email will be a link to our resource, which will support your reading of the book this summer. We really hope that helps you get the most out of that reading experience, as well as helps you participate in the discussions about that book when you arrive on campus. So um, last slide. So this is what our building looks like. This is where you can find it. You can email us. Um, and also look for emails from us in August where we'll be inviting you to sign up for our courses, sign up for consultations as you need. Um, and we look forward to meeting you all during orientation when you're here on campus. Thank you. Buenos dias. My name is Shalene Helmuth. I'm director of the Center for Languages and a member of the faculty in the Department of Spanish and Portuguese. I'm so glad that you're here today, and I look forward to meeting you as do my colleagues. Next slide, please. Because we're the Center for Languages, um, I, I think you'll be interested in knowing first where we are. We're in Furman Hall, which is in the center kind of of main campus, and we are part of the Division of the College of Arts and Science. 
Next slide, please. We welcome you to come and be in our lobby anytime you'd like. We have a nice study space. I thought it would be useful to give you three suggestions uh, for your time as you start at Vanderbilt. And the first is to get involved in your house or residential college. We are excited that you're coming. There is a place for you here. And there are many ways for you to get involved. So please jump right in. Second, next slide, please. I hope you'll keep using your languages in a couple of ways. Of course, speaking it when you're on campus. Sometimes you don't find a lot of people right away who might speak the language you speak at home, but many are here and we encourage you to find them. There are a couple of ways that we wanna help you do that. The first is to enroll in a language course, either one that you already uh, speak natively. There are many of upper level courses that we offer that are interesting and that you could really add value to and also feel at home. At least that's how I started taking courses in Spanish when I was in college. I was homesick and my language classes gave me a place to feel um, happy. So welcome to enroll in our classes. Please check them out. Secondly, at the Vanderbilt Center for Languages, we have hosted 10 language tables. They meet once a week. The one here you see is Korean. Uh, we have Spanish language tables, Italian, Japanese, Russian, German, Korean, Hindi, Urdu, Chinese, German, Tagalog. I think that's the 10. So we hope you'll come. Uh, our students participate this in these tables. Uh, again, they're once a week in one of the dining halls. And they are always interested to have conversations with native speakers. So please come. And if there's a language that you speak that we don't have a table for and you would like to start one, come see me. We'll talk about it. Third, finally, uh, you uh, could you will be invited to be to participate in so many different student organizations and, and activities. And one of the things I'd like you to know about is the Fellows for Global Engagement, which is a program of the Center for Languages. Our goals, as you see here, are to integrate the sense of being global citizens here on campus. And you can be to play a part in that in a very important way. We'll have an information session. You can see the time there, an orientation session, we call it, on August the 30th at four o'clock here in the Vanderbilt Center for Languages. So if you'd like to come see what that is like, um, learn about it, please come. You can also find the information on our website. Thank you, and I hope to see you soon. Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar. We're so excited to see you um, in just a, sh a few short months here at Vanderbilt. Um, so my name is Michael Wallace. I use he, him pronouns and I'm the assistant director of the first year experience. And so what that basically means is I coordinate international student orientation. So if you have any questions about international student orientation, you can email those to commons at vanderbilt.edu and I'll likely be the person responding to those. And um, we also have Suha with us here today, and you'll hear from her in just a minute about our international orientation leaders and how they're here to support you. So first, we have our orientation dates and reminders. Um, so you should have received some emails with um, these orientation dates and some reminders for you to get started in your transition to Vanderbilt. So please, please, please be paying attention to your emails and um, acting on any of those action items that require, um, require anything that's needed from you. Um, so for the Wednesday, August 16th, that is our International Student Move-In Day. Um, so from 8 a.m. to midnight, we have staff um, supporting you in your transition to move into your residence hall on that Wednesday, August 16th. Starting Thursday, August 17th, and extending to Friday, August 18th, that is our two-day international student orientation. So after you've moved into your room, then we'll start um, integrating you into your own small group, and we'll have um, some campus partners like we do here today to give you more information about resources to help you be successful here at Vanderbilt, while also um, helping you understand the expectations and the culture and the transition that you may be experiencing as an international student. After international student orientation, you'll either be participating in transfer student orientation beginning on that Friday evening or common view orientation for our first year students beginning on that Saturday, August 19th. 
So all of our students are required, our transfer students are required to participate in transfer student orientation. And our first year students are required to participate in common view orientation. And then for our international students, they're required, you're required to participate in that two-day orientation beforehand so that we can make sure that you are well adjusted and ready and understand um, all that is ahead of you in your academic career. Some quick reminders for you is to really pay attention to that pre-arrival form um, and to complete that by July 15th. Um, and you can access that in your housing portal. Um, and then again, if you have any questions related to international student orientation, please feel free to email commons at vanderbilt.edu. We also have some, some summer webinars um, to stay informed and to get your, your questions answered, um, like the one that we're having right now today, our Welcome International Students webinar. You can access this on our residential colleges site. Um, a recording will be available for you to refer back to. We also have two other opportunities for you to um, get questions answered and to meet more folks that are also international students. Um, so our second webinar will be July 12th um, from this same time from 8 to 9 a.m. Central Time. And that webinar will be specifically about preparing for international student orientation. So really what you can expect um, with our schedule of events, um, any questions that you have about your arrival, um, any, things that, any questions that you have for um, our students who will be panelists for that webinar. And then on July 26th, we have an international student meet and greet. So if you want to meet folks before you even arrive to campus who are also international students, this is a great um, virtual event to come to so that you can start meeting other folks who are also coming from around the world. There are These are our international student specific webinars, um, but there are a lot of different webinar opportunities for you as a Vanderbilt student that's um, that's new and starting out. Um, so please refer to your email for more of those webinar listings outside of these three that I'm mentioning. Um, ISSS also has pre-arrival sessions that are offered that are really helpful for you um, as an international student transitioning to the university. So I highly recommend those. Um, and you can also find the webinar recordings at vu.edu forward slash class of 2027. All right, and I'll pass it on to Suha. Hi, everyone. Welcome again to the webinar. I am so excited that you're here, and I cannot wait to see you all at International Orientation Leader. Um, my name is Suha Nader, and I'm the Vice President of iLead. iLead is a peer mentor program of International Orientation Leaders, and our primary role is to welcome students to campus and ensure that they have a smooth transition when they arrive to Vanderbilt. Um, and essentially throughout um, orientation, um, like the program, students are assigned to orientation groups of 10 students. Um, and along with the 10 students, they have an IOL who guides them through the process and they can form a relationship um, with their IOL. So the main goal um, is to um, build a relationship with the IOL and ask them any questions that you might be intimidated to ask otherwise. And this can be anything ranging from research opportunities or even building relationship with professors um, or even just navigating, how do I meet people? How do I make friends? Um, it can just be any question that you want to ask, but you're too afraid to. But it can also be a moment to learn about Vanderbilt's resources and culture and your transition to the school. Um, so one tip that I have is to actually um, talk to the group members because everyone is just as afraid as you are coming in. And us as IOLs recognize that it is difficult to move across the world with maybe one or two suitcases and start your life. Um, and we are there with you. Um, it doesn't matter if it's supply shopping or even just ensuring your room is set up. Um, we will be there when you arrive to campus. We will be your first point of contact and we will welcome you to campus and we will take you to your rooms. So we are just there to ensure that everything is smooth and our role does not end when international orientation ends. Um, we are there for you throughout the year. We check in on you throughout the year. 
And um, I have only served as an IOL for one year so far. This is my second year, but I still see um, the students from my group around the library sometimes, and they still ask me questions. And that makes me so happy because I'm able to, you know, like help them throughout their journey. So we are always super happy to answer questions. So that's one of my tips. Do not be afraid to ask. Um, and my last reminder is to be expected to be contacted by your IOL in late July prior to arriving to campus. This will typically be through an email and I recommend checking your Vanderbilt email regularly because this email will include really important reminders about not only any checklists or deadlines, but also any specific things that you should bring with you or any specific forms you should complete. Um, and just staying in touch with your IOL will ensure that the orientation process is smooth. I'm so excited to see you all. And um, this was great. <laughs> All right, and so we have a couple of reminders before we move into our question and answer portion. Um, so we do have some resources. Um, so if you're a family member or a parent that's on the call with us today, um, we have some resources specifically for you. So we do have a specific number for our parent and family members. Um, so we have a helpline um, that you can see on the screen. Um, you're also welcome to email welcome at vanderbilt.edu if you have any general questions about um, your student's transition or your transition as a part of their journey as a family member. There's also a Commodore Connection email series that you're welcome to sign up at. Um, so we do have that resource offered at vanderbilt.edu forward slash families. Um, and we also have a welcome website that has a lot of really great information, including a previous communication that has gone out to our students. Um, so if you're interested in taking a peek at that and seeing um, what what communication is my are, is my student receiving um, and you want to see that for yourself, um, feel free to log on vanderbilt.edu forward slash welcome. We also do have um, plenty of resources for new students, and so you'll be seeing those um, through your email, um, but I do want to point out a couple. Um, so we have a new student hotline specifically for you, um, and so that number is below, so feel free to call that and we'll be able to um, pick up the phone and and hopefully help uh, clarify any questions that you might have. Um, we also um, have some email accounts for you to get questions answered. So if you have a general welcome question, um, welcome at vanderbilt.edu is, is a great resource. But if you have a question specifically about your arrival to international student orientation or about that program itself, uh, please email commons at vanderbilt.edu. We also have the Road to Vanderbilt. That's a great guide to really help you um, start understanding what's expected of you and, and to really um, follow a timeline of, of your journey to Vanderbilt. Um, and so you can access that at vu.edu forward slash class of 2027. And um, we also have an admitted students platform and a welcome website for you to refer to as well. We would also love it if you followed us um, on Instagram at Res Colleges. We have some content that's really helpful that we post on there as well. So information about some of our campus units or some things that you can expect with orientation or some content about what life is like on campus. Um, so be sure to stay engaged and follow us um, on Instagram at Res Colleges. All right, and now we'll move into our question portion of the webinar. Okay, great. I think you can stop sharing your screen now, Michael, so people can see the panelists. Wonderful. Thank you. So um, if you haven't, uh, Natalie posted this in the chat, but at the bottom of your um, Zoom screen, there's a little icon that looks like a little chat box, um, and it's a Q&A. So if you have any questions that you want to ask, go ahead and type them in there, and we will get to them. Um, so, but I'll, I'll just start by asking all the panelists an opening question, which is, what is one question that you think all students should bring to your office or one thing that you really wish people like came to you about um, given your years of experience? And maybe I'll just ask you to answer that question in the order that you shared. So Radhika, if you wanna start. Thank you. 
What um, we really, really recommend all students to visit our office and complete the series check-in process because students miss that pr uh, process once they are here. I'm sure they're overwhelmed and forget about the immigration process because if we don't validate their CVS record, then the record will become inactive. Then it's we have to reinstate them. It's a long process. So we really request all students to visit our office if you have any questions or you can complete online CVS check-in process. But that's that's what we notice most of the time. We have to really email students to reach out to them, request them to complete the CVS check-in process because they have to complete within 30 days. Otherwise, the record will become inactive. And so Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. Can, can, what is the process they need to complete? It's called the CVS check-in process. That means they have to update their um, immigration documents to us so Got that it. we can review them and complete their record. So number one thing, if you are not an American citizen, you get to campus and within 30 days, you need to walk mm -hmm. down 18th Avenue over to your office to make sure yeah. that, right, that, and so it's an in-person thing. People need to walk into the office. Is that right? They can do online as well. But if they have any questions, if they need help to complete that process, I'm sure because it's just really confusing sometimes where to upload documents. We do send email instructions, how they can access online, how to access our website. But still, there are some students that need some assistance to complete that process. We'll be really happy to help that process. Great. They can, they can complete online as well. Yes. Thank you. And, you know, so, so often our international students coming to Vanderbilt, this is the first time um, people have traveled internationally at all. And so that's not always true, but it's often true. And so it is okay to not be sure what to do, um, not to be, and to not be sure exactly what documents you need to fill out or exactly what the procedures are. And that's why there's an entire office devoted to this issue, right? So um, one thing that's really important to know about Vanderbilt is every single resource that we talk about is free. You never have to pay for any of the resources that we have here. Um, or we could also say, you've already paid for the resources we have here via your tuition. And so you should never, never, never hesitate to reach out and ask for help because that's literally why everyone's here. Um, okay, Stephanie, same question to you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think uh, something I really wish students would ask is um, because it would give us a chance to answer it um, is uh, how how are your um, courses and um, English language support any different from the English classes I've already taken? Um, and so um, I, I really want to say that our uh, our materials also cost free, uh, as you were just saying, all our courses, everything are cost free. Um, that we really focus on the skills and the language that you need at Vanderbilt. So we actually ask the professors and we ask the students, what do you need help on? What is the most difficult thing for you? What is the thing that's actually uh, fine and you don't need help on? And then we really focus on the particular things that you're doing in your classes at Vanderbilt. Um, and so uh, we also really personalize our courses. So for example, if you have to write a reaction paper um, or a research paper, there, there are really different skills involved in that than you may have been exposed to, for example, doing your TOEFL preparation or, or IELTS. So, um, so we really, I, I want to uh, emphasize that we really personalize our, uh, our, um, our support and we also really focus on what you need here at Vanderbilt, um, which is so different from, um, you know, what you need, for example, grocery shopping or doing other things around town or meeting friends, right? So we are here for your academic support. Thank you. That reminds me, one of my doctoral students is from Thailand and she's, she did all of her college experience in the United States from undergraduate through her PhD. And she was applying for a job in Thailand and she grew up and she speaks fluent Thai, but she realized in applying for a job that she does not speak fluent academic Thai. And so, you know, even though she goes home all the time to see her family and gets along just fine, exactly to your point, the academic register is really different from the everyday register. And so you can be fluent in multiple languages, but not in all the versions of the languages, right? So that's a really great resource. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Shaleen. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I think what I'd love for students to keep asking is how do I meet other people interested in, in languages? 
Um, and we have always uh, supported this kind of uh, expansion, I guess, and greater visibility of languages on campus. We really are a multilingual campus and our city is quite so as well. Uh, and so I hope you will come by and ask those kind of questions. Uh, you know, your one of the values that you bring to our campus generally just by being here is that you speak another language. And so we want you to uh, find validation in using that language. For example, we have uh, students who are um, native speakers of English and learning other languages who would love to travel. Anything you could tell them about your experiences would be a great asset. Uh, and so we love for you to kind of make yourself available to talking about your personal experience that way in, in myriad uh, context, I, I should say. And then on the lighter side, you'll see that we have a lot of interest in learning languages, people, uh, native English speakers who are studying language, but also in events such as no English karaoke nights, come and sing, help them with their pronunciation. Um, that's a very light example, but we really do um, are excited that you're here and that you bring um, this many years of experience in your perspectives culturally. And so I, I hope that you will keep asking, how can I get involved? Who can I talk to who's also interested? We have answers. Actually, so actually one of the themes of what we do in residential colleges is think about how the community changes in relation to its members. So it's easy to think, and it is of course true that all of our courses here are in English, right? So you do need to be able to speak English in order to participate in the classes and all of our programming is done in English. But that doesn't mean that people here don't want to know and understand other languages, other ways of being, right? And the more diverse our community is, the more diversity of practices that we wanna invite and maintain in our community. And that includes linguistic practices, right? So um, there's lots of folks who, here who are, uh, who are language majors. There's a lots of folks here who are curious about languages and other cultures. And so um, you don't have to, and nobody wants you to abandon your culture or your language. And in fact, quite the opposite. Um, that's the, our, our unique differences are what makes our community actually a really interesting and vibrant and dynamic community. So the, lang the language centers are like one of the ways that that happens, right? That we really formalize the opportunity to learn about each other. Okay, um, Michael. Yeah, I would say I would love for students to ask, how do I make the most out of my international student orientation experience? Um, and I would say to really ask questions. Um, we have a lot of campus partners that are in the room for those two days um, to give you information and to really create the time and the space for you to make sure that you're getting clarity about any questions that you might, might have before you begin your academic journey. So please don't hesitate to ask those questions to the campus partners when you're participating in the sessions. And also lean on your international orientation leader. I know Suha mentioned this earlier, um, but they're really eager to support you. Many of them have been in your shoes just last year, and they've really learned the ins and outs of what it what it's like to be an international student here at Vanderbilt. Um, they're trained specifically to guide you and to support you and to help you, you know, find your classes, to help you learn about eating in the dining halls, to help you learn about success strategies for the classroom. And so really lean into, into forming a relationship with your international orientation leader. And then also for, for meeting other students and lean into to meeting other folks that are from different countries than you. Um, you'll meet folks that many of which might be from the same country as you. Um, but international student orientation is a really unique opportunity where we have a, around 250 people in the same room that are from 40 or so different countries. And so I think it's a really special two day experience where you can learn so much about different cultures. Um, and I think that that will only benefit you in the long term um, during your, your journey at Vanderbilt. Thanks, Michael. Okay. Um, and Suha, what would you say? Yeah. 
One question um, I wish people asked me is how do I make the most out of my relationship with my IOL? And one common misconception is that students tend to think that after international orientation is over, their relationship with their IOL is over and they can't necessarily ask them more questions. And um, I just like to always emphasize that this is not true. Um, and I, I guess one of the biggest concerns is you spend the most amount of time with your IOL during the first week when you are still learning things. So you can't necessarily ask all your questions, but maybe one month later, you definitely have more questions and we want you to feel like you can still come and talk to us. Um, one of my favorite examples of this is uh, we always do a month later check in and that's like the, the, the best place to do that and still maintain contact with your IOL. Last year, one of my students who I was checking in with and asking how his semester was going, he asked me, I just wanted to ask, like, what, like, what can you do for me or like, what can I ask you about? And I gave him a lot of examples and then we talked about things and he mentioned that he was having trouble asking questions in class in the sense that he was scared to raise his hand and ask something in a 200 person lecture. And I really resonated with that fear because I felt the same way when I first moved to the US. So we were able to come up with a plan about how he can go about doing that. And it started with, okay, first going to office hours and being confident enough to ask those questions in a smaller setting. And then eventually moving to actually being able to ask that question in a bigger class and being confident in your questions. So there's really no limit to the questions you can ask your IOL and they are just there to cheer you on and they want to see you succeed. Thank you. Um, so folks are posting questions in the Q&A, thank you. Sometimes people are answering them by typing them. And so if you're looking for the answer to your question, it should, you should be able to see it answered. Um, but I, a couple I want to just elevate to like a, so that everyone can say it out loud because we are recording this webinar and I just want to make so I know there are some questions that are coming up that more people might have so. Um, uh, Radhika can you just like explain how you find so in the chat people were asking about saying that this process is a bit confusing to me, which is completely understandable so Radhika can you explain. You mentioned in your answer the ISSS portal. Mm -hmm. What is that? How do they find it? What do you have to have already done in order to access it? Um, I think most of our students already are familiar with the ISS portal because they requested their I-20 through that portal. So they all have access to that portal and they know how to log in. Once you log on to the ISS portal, you should be able to find uh, the um, series check-in process link on the portal. Uh, once you log in, look for search online request, click on that, then you'll find uh, ISS check-in, CBS check-in process under general forms. And uh, we do send that email instructions as well for that link specific. Okay, thank you. So I wanna, there's a little subtext. You have to check your email. Yes. Um, this is actually a theme of all of our welcome webinars <laughs> is that you really, um, if you are an incoming student, new student or transfer student, uh, first year student or transfer student, you have to be checking your email. Um, check the email that you used to register uh, to, uh, to apply to Vanderbilt. Um, and if you have gotten your new Vanderbilt email, check that one too. Check all the emails um, because actually that is the dominant way, that is the only way we communicate with you over the summer. Um, parents, um, you are not gonna get this information because your students are 18. And so we communicate with the students directly, but if there's something you're wondering about, you can ask your child if they have, check their email and, or you could, you know, Michael went through some of the various helplines, you can always email and ask, but the number one thing you need to do is actually for, every, for students is to be checking your email. Um, and, and that is where information is coming in. I will also say that there is nothing that we have talked about today that does not have a website associated with it. And so, um, for example, there's an entire website for, for international student services. And if you go to that, there's a box that says newly admitted students. And if you click on that, you will see all the resources for newly admitted students. And that's true for all of the offices here today. So there's lots of online resources if there's things you're wondering about. Um, Radhika, while I have you on the spot, there's another question that we get all the time that you answered in the chat that I'd love for you to answer again, which is, 
can international students work while they're here at Vanderbilt? And what are the rules around that? Yes, all international students can work 19 hours per week during academic session and more than 19 hours during breaks, like summer break, winter break, spring break, you can work more than 19 hours. In general, the immigration point of view, you can work more than 20 hours, but Vanderbilt policies, you can work only 19 hours per week during academic sessions. But if you want to work off campus, you do need a special authorization from ISS office. So I would really encourage you to contact your primary advisor once upon arrival, so you'll have more information from them. Like working off campus is a little bit more complicated than usual. As long as you are eligible, we will approve it. But we just need to review whether you're eligible before you're working on campus. I really recommend you don't work off campus unless if you have an authorization from your advisor. If you do that, we have to terminate your serious record. That could lead a lot of issues. So we really recommend you, if you just please contact your primary advisor. That helps us to advise you better and efficiently. So I just want to clarify, when you're talking about primary advisor, you're talking mm -hmm. about your advisor that is for international students through right. ASSS. Okay, yes. so just mm -hmm. to clarify, mm -hmm. students have more, this gets I, very confusing. So yes. I just want to make sure it's really clear. Yes. So mm -hmm. student, all students, all undergraduate students have an advisor. All yes. new incoming students, regardless mm -hmm. of whether you're a domestic or international student, has an advisor associated with your undergraduate college. And the process is a bit different depending on which undergraduate college you're in. Um, so that's one thing we, we mean when we talk about your advisor, we're talking about your academic advisor. If you are an international student, you get two advisors, um, not to mention your international student leaders. And there's all kinds of other people who are here to help. But in terms of advisors for policy and things like that, international students have their academic advisor. And then you'll also have an advisor through the international student services that's about this very kind of issue, right? It's about like the rules and regulations associated with international students. So um, just to be clear, you, you get two people here whose entire job is to help you figure out what you can do, what classes you can take, what jobs you could take, whether or not you filled out the right forms. Okay, um, Professor Helmuth. There was a question you already answered about like, how do you meet people who might be from the same country or speak the same language as you? And the question was about Brazilian and you're a professor, Brazilians and you're a professor, professor in Portuguese. So that was like an easy win. So let, can you broaden that answer? So like, what if you're trying to find somebody who's from the same country as you or speaks the same language as you? Like, what are some ways that you could find, find those folks? Well, I think the international orientation uh, will help you meet people there. Certainly Facebook groups already are happening. And then uh, any of the student orgs, um, uh, SACE, uh, MASA, um, I'm throwing around acronyms, we're famous for that here, but there are student groups, if you look at on Anchor Link, once you have your ID and, and access and so forth, Anchor Link is a, a re repository of activities on campus and many of them are student organizations. Um, and so this is a, a natural way to find it. You can look up by language, you can look up by cultural uh, culture, uh, types of activities. So that's an easy way to kind of gain access to the landscape of what is happening with culturally oriented organizations. The other, as I mentioned, is to be on the lookout in our language departments, our course offerings, um, our language programs and uh, departments often uh, organize events for students, meet and greets, for example, at the beginning of the year. So when you see those available, go attend in person, introduce yourself. Um, there are, word, word can quickly spread because um, well, we have a growing international student body. Uh, it is still relatively small and connected. And uh, so you just, you have to look, but, but we're here. And um, I think people are always eager to meet you. Suha, can I ask you the same question from a student perspective? Where would you, as an international student orientation leader, like where would you direct students to try to find community, um, especially if they're looking for community that's like, you know, share home country or home language? Um, 
this is kind of different from specific language um, places you can find students, but I would say always go to your Commons House events because there are always so many people that you meet there. And often it can be someone who shares so many like, you know, cultural similarities as you, but it can also be people who you don't necessarily share many similarities with, but it's still um, such an amazing encounter. Um, I lived in Memorial House and we had this event called Memorial S'mores every Thursday at nine. And this was just a moment where no matter if students were doing homework or they were just coming from an exam um, everyone would go downstairs and you know talk to each other make s'mores around the fire and talk to our head of house um, who was also a Spanish professor so I remember that I was very interested in minoring in Spanish and I didn't necessarily know like how to go about it and so I you know like talked to my faculty head of house at this event as I was eating s'mores and I learned so much about the program and what the minor offers um, but then I also met other international students and I met other students from, um, you know, necessarily not international backgrounds, but their experiences. So I definitely think that's a great place to start and connect with other students. Thank you. Um, so there's one question that came up that Michael answered in the chat and it's a question we get all the time. So I wanted again to elevate it. So. So this is about like what counts as an international student anyway, right? Like what what can I do? Is it and 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 uh, what kinds of international student services do I qualify for? So first and foremost, I want everyone to know that there is nothing that residential colleges ever does that is not open to anyone. And so that was maybe too many doubling that negatives. So let me say that differently. Everything that we do in residential colleges is open to everyone. So if there is any event that seems interesting, go to it. That includes any event for international students. So the specific question was, I'm actually an American citizen, but I've never lived in the United States. So can I come to international student orientation? Um, and I'll tell you, we often have the flip question from students, which is, I am not an American citizen, but I have grown up in the United States. Should I come to international student orientation? So just to be clear, this category of international student is kind of broad, right? So the answer to all those questions are, if this looks like it would be helpful for you, you are always, always welcome to attend. Um, you just need to actually let us know that you're coming. So we would recommend if you have never lived in the United States, regardless of your citizenship status, that you do come, come to international student orientation because it's weird here and there's weird things that happen. And so the entire point of international student orientation is not actually just to get you through the legal hurdles associated with um, not being a citizen. It's a lot about what is it like here? What are some of the weird things about like Americans and American culture? So I recommend that anyone who would like to come to international student Amer uh, orientation do so. Um, and I will say that sometimes we get, uh, often we get students coming to international student orientation who speak English as their first language. So if you're coming here from England or if you're coming here from Canada, right? So we just have a huge array of um, resources and activities during international student orientation because that category is so broad and includes people who speak multiple languages or just English, people who grew up here who didn't. Shaleen, were you gonna say something? No? Okay. All right. I was just thinking Natalie for forwarding my post. <laughs> Um, I'd like to ask um, one question uh, to Stephanie to elevate an, another thing that got answered. So there's all these great classes that you all offer, but like when, when do they start and like how would you know about them as a student and how would you know when to attend them? Can you just break that down a little bit for us? Sure, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, all of our programming begins when the semester begins. Um, that that's to, that is to say, programming for you all on this call for the um, undergraduate uh, incoming students. Um, so uh, you can look for an email from us in August that's inviting you to sign up for our courses, um, and that's if you want to take our their courses are twelve weeks. Um, we offer them in the fall and in the spring. Um, and so we'll be inviting you to sign up for that in August and we'll send, you know, maybe a reminder or two, um, but look for an email from the English Language Center um, in the first week in August. Um, and that will be sent to your Vanderbilt email address. 
And then um, the consultations start at the same time and you can sign up for those whenever you like, when it fits your schedule. Um, you can sign up for them up to two weeks in advance um, and as close as 24 hours before you wanna meet, uh, like the night before. So, um, you know, those are available to you as a more of an on-demand option where you pick the content. You say, well, I've got a presentation coming up. I want to practice. I would like some feedback or um, I'm working on a paper, but I'm not really sure how to organize my ideas um, or even I've already written this paper, but I'm really not sure that it's, you know, saying what I wanted to say. Um, and so you can sign up and get help at any stage of of the process with the consultation appointments. Um, I know that the person asking the question was asking, um, what can I do this summer? Um, well, the resources we have on our website are there for you anytime. Um, and so you can access those already. And I did place a link uh, in, the, uh, in the answer for you. So you can click around our website and um, there's a lot there that you can look at even before you come to campus. Thank you. Michael, um, can you share a little bit about how international students get in uh, sort of like the nitty gritty of living here, like bank accounts, mobile card, uh, phones, et cetera, like the things that do not transfer easily from other countries. How do they get all that set up once they're here? Yeah, international student orientation. So at international student orientation, we will have our vendors um, on campus to help you set up your, your bank account, your phone account. If you need um, supplies, we have our international orientation leaders to help you order those supplies online, or we can take you to Target and we can provide that transportation. We will be providing transportation for you if you'd rather have an in-store experience where you're getting supplies um, during that international student orientation two-day period. Um, so we have um, a lot of different resources on campus to help you take care of the things that you normally would off campus. Um, I'll also say um, ISSS is offering some webinars this summer, and so a few of those webinars cover some ins and outs of more specific transitions um, to Nashville, Tennessee. And so um, if you um, have more questions about your transition, that's also a great place to um, attend and to get those questions answered and get more clarity about, um, about your any ins and outs that you might need in coming here. And Target, some people surely know what Target is, even though they don't live in the United States. But if you don't, it's actually this giant superstore um, where you can get an unbelievable range of things. You can get mascara and you can get bananas and you can get an iPhone all in the same store. Um, and there's a bunch of those kinds of things here. So that's one that's close, close to campus. That's kind of a one-stop shop for a lot of different things that you need. Um, some people are coming from countries where like they have way bigger stores than Target and other people are coming from countries where like no building is that big, right? So there's always this range of experiences for that exact shopping trip. I will mention, uh, Michael didn't mention this, but um, if you're an international student and you're flying in, we also meet you at the airport for international student move in. And so um, if you're flying here by yourself in particular and you're like, oh God, I'm going to be exhausted and jet lagged and now I have to find my way to campus. No, um, you will be probably tired and jet lagged, but you don't have to find your way to campus alone. So somebody from our office will be at the airport and we will be giving, giving you uh, codes, lift codes, I believe we're doing this year. Is that right, Michael? Uh, yes. To get you to campus. So um, I was just recently, I'm obviously not a new undergraduate. I'm a little older than incoming students, but I was just traveling to Portugal last, two, two weeks ago. Never been to Portugal before. Um, and I did feel pretty confident that I could probably sort it out if I needed to, but it was really reassuring to me to arrive at the airport. I was there for a meeting and to have the, you know, the, the, the foundation that had organized the meeting there with a sign, like waiting for me, it made things a lot easier, especially because I was tired and I don't speak Portuguese. So that's exactly the kind of thing we want to make sure is ready for you all. Um, so we have, we are coming to the end of our session. We just have a brief, brief time for one more quick question that I'm gonna ask the panelists and I'm gonna ask you to answer briefly because we have four minutes. But um, I'd love to end with a piece of advice. Um, if there's one piece of advice that you would offer for incoming international students, um, what would it be? 
Um, and I'm not going to call on you because I didn't warn you about this question. So I'll just, if you, I'll just let you unmute when you have your piece of advice um, and 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 share it. Okay, Stephanie. Uh, I don't mind sharing. Um, I think uh, something that uh, I hear from students a lot is, oh man, I wish I came to the English Language Center earlier. Um, we are not connected to your professors or your transcripts. Um, you can come to the English Language Center and ask the questions that you are not sure you really want to ask your professor. Um, you know, we are a space where all the international and uh, folks who are using English as an additional language come to ask those questions. So um, don't be nervous to come and introduce yourself and ask those questions with us. That's a great point. And I'd just add that please uh, make yourself known as an international student. So let us know you're here. We are eager to 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 learn about you and, and get you connected. I would say there's no silly questions. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or we'll be happy to help you. And read our emails, that's only request. <laughs> yeah, read your emails is probably the number <laughs> one piece of advice um, as you can see from this webinar, um, but also meet other people, um, I think, Nashville and Vanderbilt is very friendly um, compared to other parts of the world that I've been in. And so people are really willing and have a desire to cultivate relationships with you. So uh, please don't hesitate to reach out um, and to start forming those, those relationships with folks um, because we are here to support you in your journey at Vanderbilt. I would say if you see a friend, like a familiar face, definitely say hi or smile because there is a chance that the other person also remembers you and wants to say hi and be friends with you, especially in Commons, where you will mostly be eating lunch and dinner. You'll mostly run into the same group of people over and over again. And I think like the best thing you can do is say hi and be familiar. Suha, I think that is the most important piece of advice for all students. So. Um, I think it's really hard for some, for some people, it's really easy to just talk to strangers. We're gonna take that group of people and set them aside. For the rest of the people, it can be really intimidating to initiate a conversation. And um, one of the things that I can tell you from the benefit of years is that it is very rare to say hi to someone and that person to be mad at you for having reached out in a friendly way, right? So. I, I myself, now that I'm Dean, have, get to speak to all kinds of people I don't know, but that used to be really scary. And so I can tell you, like having now initiated a conversation with probably thousands of people, many of whom don't know who I am, people always appreciate being seen and being welcomed, even if they don't know you. And so um, it is the number one best way to try to meet people once you're here. Um, so with that, I'm going to end this first webinar. I'll remind people if you knew someone, if you know someone who wanted to be at this webinar and wasn't able to, we are, it is being recorded and we will go ahead and post that on our website. Um, and when in doubt, look for um, any information that you're looking for, you can find um, or at least get directed to via Vanderbilt's website. So vanderbilt.edu backslash welcome is our welcome site. Um, and that I'm just looking at Michael to make sure I had that you are that is that right. Um, and that that site may not have every piece of information you need, but it's going to direct you. Oh, good. Natalie just put it in the chat too. Um, uh, it's going to direct you to where you need to go. So that's a great hub. If you remember nothing else, remember that website. So thank you all very much. We are really looking forward to seeing you in two short months, two and a half months. It will be here before we know it. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank you.